Welcome to uh, Red Bull Music Studios here in sunny London. We're joined by one of Bristol's most celebrated sons, Matt Walker, a.k.a. Julio Bashmore. One thing I want to clear up that people might wonder throughout the show, uh, we're not related. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, um, yeah, no, it's good to be here. Right there, I made most of the album, and um, on a lot of this gear, well, all of this gear. So. so, I mean, maybe to get started, we could ask you, um, when you first started making music, what, what was your first setup? My first setup, you know, like anyone else these days, uh, just, you know, getting software, and I did that thing where you just buy as many, you well, you get as many plugins as possible <laughs> when you start producing. And uh, I got literally everything, like everything you could possibly imagine, which I'm sure everyone does. But then you realize, man, I don't know how to use any of this. <laughs> like, and, um, and then I started to slowly like refine it, maybe buy something here and there, you know, go legit. Honestly. <laughs> Just looking at us, uh, what we've got set up here tonight, there's some nice bits of kit. Maybe you'd like to talk to people about um, what you have with you today, where you, and you know, maybe where you got it from as well. Because just, uh, just so I can see this right now, you know, some of this is pretty okay. desirable, you know? Yeah, yeah, it is. And I can tell you, all of this, like these are all the first things I bought. And I can say, this, do not buy off eBay. None of this shit works. Like, <laughs> None of it works properly. So that would be my first bit of advice to anyone here. But this is the first thing I bought, um, Jupiter 6. And, uh, you know, because I'd hear all these people, you know, because you always, you know, back when you start making, you're thinking, like, what's, what's, what have they got that I haven't? And I think that's where, that's where hardware can be like really tantalizing to like when you start out. And um, you know, cause I was huge, still am like hugely into prints and all these guys and you know, obviously obsessed with all the late eighties, early nineties house music. And um, I think I saw a guy called Gerald. He had one of these in his studio and I was like, you know, if you want to sound like those guys, it probably helps have the, some of the same equipment. Uh, so yeah, I got this this guy, and um, I'm not sure if you can you won't be able to see it at the back, but it's in a pretty bad way, uh, and that definitely got worse since I bought it. And then I was like, that sounds nice. Need some drums. Uh, got the 808 after like a bit of uh, weekend DJ money. So obviously, you know, I think it's it's quite a hard one because it costs about the same as the 909. And it's the choice of the two. And I just thought, um, you know, a lot of this, actually, no, the truth is, because, you know, my signature sound is that boom, boom, boom. That, and I've got the right voice to do that. <laughs> um, so I thought, okay, I, I can do it for real. So I'll get the 808. And then I remember it arriving, and I was just really disappointed because it's only got one pitch for the bass, you can't change that. So I was like, oh God, what, why have I done this? And then, you know, pretty ignorant. Uh, but it's, yeah, so I, I, you really have to learn these things. And um, I'm okay at it now, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's like my favorite drum machine. It's just got all those perfect sounds for, I think it's more versatile than the 909. And then this is my Yamaha DX100. Um, I bought it because apparently that's what, this is like the synth, this is what Troutman, Roger Troutman used for his talk box thing. And um, so I, I kind of learned how to use the talk box. I, I should have bought it with me really. You really um, should have done it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, that that was tricky because that it's like there's one preset on this, which is the Roger Troutman sound. And I thought I'd use it on all the time, but because, like, unless you're Roger Troutman, 
all that really amazing. I, I mostly just use it for like, I call people on their birthday <laughs> and like use it then. With the DX, this is kind of my favorite thing. I was like, if I could get rid of everything else, it would, I'd keep this. Um, just because I think, you know, loads of Detroit techno, early Detroit techno was made on this. And um, I made 07 on this. And, uh, you know, this, if I'll, I'll bring it bring it up later, but, you know, with um, with 07, it's, it's like, so on this, the high bit is a xylophone pitched up, and the bass is the same xylophone pitched down. And it's like, you know, drum kit and oh baby, and then that's it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like painfully simple. I mean, that's that's one of the things I'll be talking about today. It's like the whole simplicity in making music and how I try and narrow it down into real key components. This is like everything you'll hear today is probably like the wrong how you shouldn't make music. <laughs> like literally, it's, you know, many people would frown on this and <laughs> I, don't I don't necessarily encourage it, but I'm just gonna show you how I do it. I remember when I started out, it can be daunting, like actually just making a start. And even now, like sometimes it will creep up on you. It's like, it can be hard to just make a start. And one of the ways I've got around that is by just using any, any form of like medium uh, predominantly the internet, like YouTube. Maybe you can explain uh, to the audience how you would go about using YouTube okay. um, either back in the day or, or now. Or how, what would be your process around that? Okay, so this is what I do. This is Google Translator, everyone. <laughs> and uh, I just type in like, um, I don't know, like brass synth robot <laughs> and then let's turn that into Japanese Shinchu Shinseri Oboto <laughs> and then we go to YouTube is that yeah so this is what I'd be looking for and then I've already downloaded this and uh, I'm going to put it into Ableton. With Ableton, uh, it, it suits me because I like to do, I like to start about a million different projects. That's why the YouTube thing works because I can do it fast. So, you know, that's, that's the start, do you know what I mean? That came quite fast. Jay, do you want to come up? Let's try and get an ooh. Because just an ooh. Round of applause for Jay Dunner, please. Yeah. <laughs> we'll keep, yeah, just, we'll keep it simple.
that's that's perfect. No, no, that's great. So obviously, I I I try and I do that in my bedroom. I do that in the shower, and it sounds horrendous. So I'm not even going to try. And that's why, you know, you collaborate, and uh, like that's amazing. This girl's got the best voice I've ever. It's great. <laughs> yeah. But now we're going to hear it back. <laughs> so, no, it, it was beautiful, but reverb chorus delay. Uh, <laughs> Round of applause, please. Well, I've always wished I had the ability to just go up and like, do something like that, so that's really great. <laughs> This is how we just make a start, you know? And um, we'll, we'll start like a million things over the course of the day. And, uh, you know, actually, if it had to be good to get all three of us in the studio together, that'd be cool. <laughs> but um, it's all about making those starts. That's what I'm trying to, that's, that's the point of this lecture. You've got to just make that start. And it can come together like fast if you're just comfortable with the people you're working with, you know? So, yeah. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs> to be honest, we get it to a point we'd like lay down we'd start writing some lyrics come up with some more melodies try and get a song structure um and then you know as soon as it gets a bit like you know you've heard the loop like a million times then you just move on to something else and start something fresh like that's that's how we do it i think i'll just i'm just going to build up this loop basically Bixby, do you want to get on this Rhodes? <laughs> or the Jupiter? What? Go on the, go on the Jupe, let's do the Jupe. Let's, uh, let's try and get a bass line here.
I didn't mean to make a progressive house track. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> but um, that's how I make a song. <laughs> okay, so that that's pretty that's pretty much it. Like that's that's kind of I build it up to that level, and I might sit on it for like two weeks, two years sometimes. I'm not even joking. Like. And then you go back through, you're like, I've run out of ideas or like looking for inspiration. And sometimes I'll just go back and just go through ideas and, and, and you know, I might find this and I might be like, what was I thinking? But then <laughs> there might be uh, like, then there'd be that sick, like there'd be like a sick vocal and I'll, I'll just take that. That might be what this other shit tune's missing. Like, then you put the two together, and who knows, like, that could work. <laughs>